Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now hopefully you've seen my video on logical and bitwise and and logical and bitwise or. Now I left out one operation from that video intentionally and that was exclusive or because I think it merits its own video. So if you want to find out all about exclusive or, please let me explain. So really a precursor to watching this video is you should watch that video on and and or and nand and nor and there'll be a link to it up here. Now if you remember the or operation is kind of the if one thing is true or the other. So if it's raining or it's snowing then I'll take my umbrella. So if we're saying that one is true and zero is false then a zero and a zero gives you a zero because if it's not raining and it's not snowing, then I don't need to take my umbrella. But if either of them are true, so one and a zero gives you a one, and a zero and a one gives you a one. Now the thing about or is that one and a one also gives you a one, because one of the conditions have actually been met, so therefore it's true. Now the thing about exclusive or is it changes just that last little bit. Everything else remains the same. Zero, zero gives you zero, one, zero gives you one, zero, one gives you one. But now one, one, because it has to be an exclusive or, has to be definitely one of them and not both of them, then one, one gives you zero. Now this has some amazing side effects because if you exclusive or one number with another and take the result, you can use that result to exclusive or it with one or the other of the two things to give you back the missing number. Let me give you an example. If you take 65 and exclusive or it with 22, then you get 87. Now, if you take 87 and exclusive or it with 22, you get back the 65, that very first number. And if you take the 65 and exclusive or it with 87, then you actually get uh, 22 again. So basically, it's a great way of reconstructing missing data if you only have two parts of the three bits of information. And if that sounds familiar, then of course you're remembering back to the video I did on RAID and there's a link to it just up here. On some RAID setups, if you have data on disk one and data on disk two, there is some special information, parity information stored on disk three, which is used to reconstruct the data on disk one or two if one of them fails. So what happens is basically the data on disk one gets exclusive all of the data on disk two, and then that gets stored on disk three. And then if disk one fails, you can still recreate it because you have that parity information. So parity is very, very important in setups like RAID 5, for example. But it's also important when it comes to encryption. Because you can reverse it, it means that you can encrypt something and then you can decrypt it. So if I had all this data that I wanted to encrypt and I exclusive ordered it with 22, then the data that I get out the other end will not be my original data. It will be something different. It will be gobbledygook. And it will say, oh, this is encrypted. And if I want to decrypt it, all I've got to do is XOR it again and I get back to my original data. Of course, the problem is if I do it all with 22, it wouldn't take much just to test a few bytes with a few combinations and very quickly I could work out the key that I was using. So an alternative then is to encrypt each byte with a different uh, number. So if I had a password, P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D, and I encrypted the first byte of my data with the P, the second byte of my data with the A, the third byte with the S, exclusive audit with all of these things, then actually I would have a different uh, set of numbers coming out and that would be a bit harder to crack. However, it wouldn't be that hard because if I was just uh, exclusive oring even just a, a, you know, a photo that's maybe two or three megabytes, that's enough data for enough patterns for me to very quickly see that every eight bytes there's a pattern forming. But what happens if I could invent a, uh, an idea that an algorithm that generates the same stream of numbers, I give it a starting point and it generates the same stream of numbers every time. If I say start at seven and it generates a stream, if I say start at 59 and it generates a different stream of numbers, but always the same stream for 59, then I could use that stream against my original data and exclusive or it all the way along. And you would never know what numbers I use only if you had access to that stream of numbers. And that's what actually is a stream cipher. It allows me to come up with an algorithm that generates a predetermined set of numbers based on a key, based on a password. So you put in 
password and it generates this stream of numbers and it will always generate the same stream of numbers. But if I use a different password, if I use secret, then I get a different stream of numbers and then basically I'm exclusive ordering every single bit of the data as I go down it with the stream of numbers I'm creating. It's called a stream cipher and RC4 is probably one of the most famous stream ciphers. So as you can see, XOR has got some amazing properties. You can recover missing data, you can use it for encryption so that you can then unencrypt it. And it's a really, really powerful mathematical tool. So the next time you're encrypting something or the next time you heard about a RAID device kind of recovering from a data crash, you know that XOR is playing an important part in that system. My name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please hit that bell notification icon. Please share this on social media because we're really trying to build up the community here. Also, you can get into the comments. Tell me what you think of the video. Tell me what else you'd like to see here on the channel. I read all the comments and I reply when I can. Okay, that's it. So I'll see you in the next one.